Thank you for coming today on this very cold, blustery day. Today we're going to uh, review Canvas. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to ask you a couple questions. Um, what do you not like about your administrative tasks for teaching? Uh, grading papers and dealing with absent students. Yes, that can be time consuming and frustrating. Mm -hmm. uh, photocopying and containing and contacting students outside of class. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see um, what we can do about that. Canvas has a lot of um, nice functions that can reduce the stress on you from those different things. So I'll be covering those. Um, so what, what can Canvas do for you? I'm going to talk about that. How is Canvas better than Google Classroom or Blackboard? Um, I will show you the key features of Canvas. And hopefully we'll have time that you can try it out yourself. And I will show you how to find additional support. There's lots of support online for Canvas. Okay, why are we having this workshop today? Uh, the school district is looking at creating something across the whole entire district that everybody can use, um, and they want it. Um, they want you to evaluate three different um, systems. So there's Canvas, there's Blackboard, and then there's Google Classroom. And you're supposed to evaluate which one suits your needs better, so that we can vote and decide on one. The uh, program that has the most votes at the end of this um, time period will um, be implemented by the district and purchased for next school year, not this one. Uh, my workshop will focus only on Canvas. Okay, how are other schools using Canvas? Um, K-12 schools are now using Canvas as well as universities. Uh, they use it for online classes, but it also has plenty of functions in a regular classroom. It can provide uh, instructional support. Uh, students can access their grades at any time. Uh, you can put tests on here. Uh, that cuts back on your grading, as one of you were saying, that that's really time consuming for you. But the only thing it can't help with is essay tests because you still have to read those and grade them by hand. But anything that's multiple choice, true, false, uh, short answer, well, short answer, you'd still have to grade. Um, most of the things you could use a Scantron for, you can put the test into here and it'll automatically grade it for you and save you time that way. And then it'll um, immediately upload the grade into the grade book. Uh, you can also put uh, copies on here. I think one of you said you didn't like photocopying and of course lugging all those papers around to take home the grade. You can eliminate most of that and save trees by putting the assignments on Canvas and then uh, the students can access them from anywhere. Uh, you can also have a chat function. Uh, there's all different kinds of things. I'm going to walk through in a demonstration. Also, other businesses that aren't even schools are using Canvas. Uh, human resource services for different businesses are using Canvas uh, to provide new skills for employees and training and information. Uh, I got a short video here that explains it better. Proprietary vendors and others are well open source and no matter who you go with if you need a bug fix you need to upgrade want that awesome new feature you need to upgrade service packs version numbers course migration patches bleh. what about slowdowns and outages they always come at the worst time like during finals ah! and LMS's are super complicated tons of pages screens links and a gajillion clicks just to get where you need to go 
It almost makes you wonder, did anyone think of the user when they built these things? Uh -huh. Well, the guys over at Instructure thought that an LMS should be built with only one thing in mind, the user. So they built Canvas. Canvas has a beautiful, modern interface that is super intuitive and actually easy to use, just like the websites you already know how to use. So getting up to speed doesn't take like 37 hours of training. And since no one wants to have to update their software or wait for service packs, Canvas was built in the cloud, meaning bug fixes and updates happen auto-magically. And since it lives in the cloud, automated provisioning means server resources are always available when you need them the most, even during finals. And since Canvas is commercial open source and is backed by the Instructure engineering team, it gets the best of both worlds. Canvas is the LMS built with you in mind. All it needs now is a built-in coffee maker. Or does it have one already? Hmm, does it? Get started with Canvas by Instructure today. Canvas, uh, an LMS is just a fancy term for Canvas, Blackboard, and those types of um, services. Okay, the, um, another way to use Canvas as clubs uh, can also have a Canvas page. Um, administration, faculty committees, you can use it for discussion amongst groups. Uh, all your ideas can stay in one place. Library can also have their own Canvas page, uh, listing services and survey tools. As I said before, it's used in both online and in-person classes. It's been incorporated in other schools in pretty much every subject. It's also used in colleges, so uh, our students, when they leave high school, will already be familiar with how to use it. There's another perk to it. Um, it can allow you to go pretty much paperless. Um, you can also engage the students and it helps you stay more organized. You don't need to have countless folders with different worksheets and stuff already printed up. It's easy to use. It, re it requires very little training. Uh, there's plenty of support online. And it's also updated continuously. They're very good about um, taking care of problems immediately. It has a speed grading function. It's, uh, it has a clean interface. The tools are easy to use. You can do quizzes, discussions. It can be used on iPads. It organizes lessons. And it integrates other uh, technologies it also has an attendance feature where you can uh, take attendance through something called roll call. A uh, student can submit to you multiple um, submissions for the same exact assignment. And the only problem is it's kind of hard to make large scale changes. You can modify test banks. So it has a calendar feature, discussion board, you can uh, give students audio or visual messages, you can put rubrics on there, you can put up class announcements. It saves time and money. It's good for distance learning. It increases efficiency and you can give immediate feedback. You don't have to wait till Monday morning to uh, get back to a student. If you are interested in Blackboard, uh, Jess, I think you don't have any experience with Blackboard. There's a link here where you can check that one out as well. Canvas just has more functions. Uh, also, there's a link here for Google. Now, what's good about um, Canvas is you can use uh, Google Drive as well. And then there's some video guides if anybody's interested to check those out later. In this video, you will get a brief overview of the Canvas user interface. The Canvas user interface has three main components, the dashboard, global navigation, and sidebar. The dashboard is the first thing you see when you log into Canvas. It provides a high-level overview across all your courses. 
Okay, I am going to show you an example rather than watch the video. So here's the dashboard. Uh, it shows you all of your classes you're teaching or if you're a college student, the classes you're taking. Over here on the left, this button will always bring you back to this screen. Over here, it'll show you if you have papers that need to be graded that have been submitted. You can also see all the courses you're teaching right here. And you can even go back and see um, courses that you previously have taught. You can put people into groups, and then they can access it from the side. Calendar function, I really like. <coughs> Excuse me. It shows when the due dates are for that there's an assignment or a test due for each class. And when there's a line through it, that means that uh, it's been completed. So this is what it would show up for a student. So if they've turned it in, there'd be a line through it. Also, uh, you could, there's a weekly agenda and the time something's due. And then over here, you can set up appointments with people. Inbox, um, your students can get a hold of you through here, not just through your email. You can create a home page. You can break down uh, stuff by weeks. So, like this could be, you know, week nine. You can put in something about what you're covering for the day and any links you want to use for the classroom. Or you can upload worksheets and put them in here, and then the students can just click on them on their uh, Chromebooks and do them. You can put quizzes on here. Or exams. So you could type any type of question in here. and it'll automatically grade it as they go through and take the, the test. And then attendance, that's what, this is what that looks like. Like I could go through here and mark all as present at one time if nobody's absent. Or I click it again, and X means that they're absent. Yellow would mean they're late to class. gradebook function looks like this. If you see a red bar around it, that means they turned it in late. Yeah, I know. <coughs> uh, another neat feature is turn it in. You can automatically um, check to see if somebody is uh, word for word copying on an assignment. So <laughs> this person's got a red Turnitin marker. That means they pretty much just copied off somebody else's material. 75% similarity score. That means that 75% of their... I apologize. 75% of their um, material that they wrote for this assignment was uh, copied. So. They probably should not have gotten a very good grade. But you can enable turn it in on any assignment when you're creating it. Down at the bottom there'd be a box. So over here I can see somebody's atten attendance through roll call. It tells me how many times they've been absent and they get an assigned uh, grade for that. So this person, Miriam, I think has missed four classes. So she's at a 77% for attendance, which is not very good. This shows me their average for all their assignments and then their current grade in the class. 
another way to quickly check grades is come down here at the bottom and say view grades. This will show uh, if you are taking a class that uses Canvas, your individual grades would be up here down at the bottom. Uh, the courses you, uh, you teach would show up here and you can say student interactions report. It'll say the last time you contacted them or they contacted you uh, through the inbox and if they have any assignments turned in that need to be graded, see here's one. Uh, the student has that one I showed you on the front of the dashboard and let's see current score and if final score would be if they did not turn in anything else for the rest of the semester and those assignments became zeros. So let's see Jared. I talked to him 11 days ago through the inbox. He's currently got a nice 48.9 percent on everything he's turned in and if he did not turn in the last two assignments he'd have a 43.7 percent in the class. You guys have any questions? No. All right. Uh, there's one other function I think is really neat. When you first click on a class, you can go over to Course Analytics.